Hello students, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve these two problems which says that if the shaft is subjected to an axial force of 5 kN, determine the bearing stress acting on the collar at A. And the second problem says that if the 60 mm diameter shaft is subjected to an axial force of 5 kN, Determine the average shear stress developed in the shear plane where the collar A and the shaft are connected. So for the first problem, we have to find the bearing stress and the bearing stress is not the internal stress. It is the stress between any two contacting surface. So we are going to find the bearing stress for collar A. So this is the collar A you guys can see and the contact surface is somewhere here. And as you guys can see that I have drawn the front view of um, this shaft along with the collar. If we look from this side, then as you guys can see that this inner circle represents the shaft. And this outer circle represents the outer periphery of uh, the collar A. And as you guys can see that we have a gap of 2.5 mm on both sides of the shaft. So this, this circle represents the gap of 2.5 mm so the bearing stress will be for this area right which is in contact with or you can say that this is the bearing at which um, the shaft is passing or we can say this is some support so the bearing stress is we can say that the bearing stress will be here you guys can see for this area which is in contact so we can say that the bearing stress will be equal to force applied on the collar, right? So if, if the shaft is, if the force is applied on the shaft towards the right, then here on the periphery of the collar, we will have force FB, right? So, so we will have all the force here. If I draw the 3D diagram of the collar, let's say this represents that collar. So then we are, we will, be having that uh, force bearing force in this direction like so on all the the bearing force will be acting on all the contact surfaces so now as you guys can see that if we look for this free body diagram then you can say that the that the average force which is going to be or we can say that the resultant force which is going to be applied on the collar a will be in this direction because we, we are applying the force on the shaft in this direction so this contact surface will apply the force on the collar in this direction so we will be going to consider the resultant force or we can say that we will have the resultant force which will be we will consider the single force which will replace all of these small forces which are applied by the contact surface so let's say that that force is force fb so we can say that FB, the bearing force divided by the, the bearing area. But if, if the bearing force is somewhat acting like this, because the resultant force will be acting towards the left. So we can say that if we apply the sum of the forces in the X, the sum of the force in the X will be equals to zero. Then we can say that the bearing force is in the negative direction because towards the right is our positive X. So we can say that minus FB plus 5 kilonewton, this is equal to 0 and we can say that FB is equal to 5 kilonewton. So the same 5 kilonewton force is applied on the bearing surface. So we can say that the bearing stress will be 5 kilonewton divided by the bearing area. So we have to find out this area. Now you guys can see we have to find out this area and this area will be equal to um, pi divided by 4 let me write that the bearing area will be pi divided by 4 so this radius square minus this radius square or we can say that this dia square if we are using pi divided by 4 then we have to take the outer dia and minus the inner dia square so the inner dia is this one we can say that we have to think for this for this dia the inner dia we have to remove that gap because we have a gap of 2.5 mm on both sides so this will be the inner dia and the outer dia will be 
like this. So this is the outer dia. So we can say that AB is pi divided by 4. Outer dia is, you know, um, which is 100 mm. We are given here, this is 100 mm. So 100 divided by 1000 is, we can say 0 0.1 meter, 0 0.1 square minus the inner dia. So 60 plus twice of 2.5. So we can say that the inner dia is 60 plus 2 times 2.5. So we can say that 60 plus 5, so 65 mm. So the inner dia is 65 and if we divide it by 1000 then this will be 0 0.065 meter. Pi divided by 4 multiply by 0 0.1 square minus 0 0.065 square. So this gives us area of, if we move the decimal place towards the right three digits, then this is 4.536 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square. So we can write that this is the bearing stress is 5 kilonewton, or we can say that 5 into 10 raised to the power 3 newton divided by 4.536. 10 to the power minus 3. So we can say that if I bring this 10 to the power minus 3 in the numerator, then this will become 10 to the power 6. So we can say that 5 divided by 4.536. So this is 1.102. We can say that this is 1.102 into 10 raised to the power 6. And this is Newton per meter square. So we can say that this is 1.102 mega pascal. This is the bearing stress on the collar between uh, the two contact surfaces. Similarly, the second problem says that if the 60 mm diameter shaft is subjected to again the same axial force of 5 kN, determine the average shear stress. So we have to find the average shear stress. Now the average shear stress will be uh, between the shaft and between the shaft and uh, the contact surface of the uh, collar A. Now this is the shaft you guys can see and if 5 kN force is applied here then um, this because the force uh, on this color the resultant force on color A is in this direction so what will happen is that there will be a shear force between the surface of the shaft and the color which is in contact right so we will have the shear forces in this direction. So we can say that we are having the shear forces in this direction, let's say, and the resultant of all these uh, shear forces will be um, in this direction, right, towards the left, right. So we can say that this is the shear force V and this is that 5 kN force. So again, if we apply the sum of the forces in the, in the x direction, let's say if this is our x direction, so we can say that the shear force, again, the sum of the forces in the X is equal to zero. So we can say that uh, 5 kN minus V, the resultant, this is equal to zero. So V is equal to 5 kN, the shear force. So now we can find the average shear stress. So the average shear stress is equal to V divided by the shear area. Now the shear area is, you guys can see that this is the shear area. So this area will be this 2 pi r multiplied by this thickness. And you guys can see that the thickness is 15 mm. So this thickness is 15 mm. So we can say that the shearing area is 2 pi r. Now the radius is, the die of the shaft is six, 60 mm, then the radius will be 30 mm. So you guys can use 2 pi r or we can say that pi d. Let me write this as like this, pi d into thickness. So pi dia is 60, the die of the shaft is 60 mm. Or we can say 60 divided by 1000 will be 0 0.06 and the thickness is 15 mm so that will be 15 divided by 1000 will be 0 0.015 and this will be in meter square. 
So we can say that the shear force is 5 kN, 5 into 10 raised to the power 3 divided by the shear area which will be pi into 0 0.06 multiplied by 0 0.015. So 5 into 10 raised to the power 3 divided by pi multiplied by 0 0.06 multiplied by 0 0.015. So this gives us the average shear stress between the shaft and the collar A is 1.77 megapascal. Again, you guys can see that uh, the decim if we move the decibel place six digits then we will have 1.77 megapascal so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from mechanics of materials by rc hibler